Oh my gosh, this room is a mess. Hi, so y'all have been asking me a lot how I make my videos, so I feel like just making a video talking about how I make my videos is kind of ironic because it's a video talking about making more videos. But it's honestly something I've wanted to do for a while as like a little behind the scenes for those of you interested out there, including behind the scenes on where the zombie target came from. And also why this room is such a disaster so much of the time. And honestly, I'm, I'm just gonna answer that now. It's because this wall is cool, but it's also a titanic pit in my ass and that is because anytime i get like two three or heavens forbid four more blasters that i want to add to it i literally have to take everything off and rearrange the entire wall sometimes i have to do that with both walls which is what i'm trying to avoid right now but obviously i've had to break avoiding that and have to modify the other wall as well sometimes i just like to change the theme so right over here we've got all of the modified or hobbyist blasters that i have some of them are still works in progress like the long shot and and the strife but then we've got other stuff like the el toro the harrier and the rapid strike which i actually do still need to do something with and for those of you who have a keen eye you'll notice that the titan cs50 is here because yes i plan on modding the titan cs50 I spent $200 on it, it's going to do something good. And a lot of the struggle with just rearranging the wall is like puzzling the blasters together to save as much space as possible. That's kind of impossible at some places like this big dead space right here. There's really nothing I can do that would fill in more of that space. And right here, this whole empty space is reserved for the stock I'm getting for the strife because I just want to put the strife here and have it be fully assembled and not have to worry about putting on or taking attachments off. The door in the middle, I don't, I'm not gonna do anything with because I need this to be an empty space so that I can stand in front of it and film. And with that, we move on to the other side of the room where I have a couch that I usually use just to put blasters on that I don't know where else to put. And then we have two nerf blaster racks on either side of it, which I have packed with more blasters than I know what to do with. I tried to put the biggest, most obnoxiously shaped blasters here so that they just kind of line up next to each other and I don't have to worry about them anymore, as well as the little drawers in here storing hyper rounds on this side and half-length darts on the other side. And right in the middle of the room facing my door is the tripod, which I literally just put my phone on and start yelling. Now here's the thing and why I stopped filming in this room in the first place. Do you see that? That is the only light source in this room and it moves constantly throughout the entire day. And you might say, yeah, well you got ceiling lights, but they don't look as good and they make the video footage just really grainy. All of the lighting comes from that big skylight in the roof at an angle. And so that light bar gradually moves from over in that corner across the room and up the side of the wall throughout the day. And the lighting changes basically all day long. I fixed this problem by having the tripod directly underneath the light box. So literally all of the light coming down goes right over the phone and directly onto my face. So no matter what time of day it is, the lighting will look almost exactly the same. It's the same basic principle as getting studio lights, except I'm just using a natural light source instead of having to spend two to $300 on studio lights for this room, which really, really, really helped make this channel accessible for me to do because lighting was one of my biggest concerns from the get-go. Usually I try and get all my filming done pretty early in the morning without having to wait throughout the day because that means that the light box will stay in roughly the same spot and the lighting won't change much at all. However, even sometimes when I've had to split the video up into sections like I did with the double punch review, it's kind of hard to notice. Even though with the double punch review, I kind of really stretched it because we were working on getting a PS5 that day and it took the entire day and I had to split filming up into three sections, some in the morning, some in the afternoon, and some way later at night. A pretty new addition to this channel are these three nuggets right here. This is the Comica Boom XD, I think it is. I mean, that's what it says on here. I'm not sure if there's different models, but basically all you need to know is that this is a radio wave transmitter microphone. Why is that significant? Because it doesn't use a Bluetooth connection or a Wi-Fi connection. It uses its own separate connection through radio waves that transmit literally between each other like walkie-talkies do. If you get the microphone set up in the right spot, for me, that's about the middle of my shirt, you can actually get very clear, crisp audio out of this thing, which is insane because it's a wireless microphone and usually wireless Bluetooth microphones have lots of little staticky, grainy noise because of the wireless connection. This thing, because it's using radio radio waves that transmit directly from the receiver to the transmitter or from the transmitter to the receiver, you don't get any of those problems and the audio sounds really, really good. The only real caveat with this is the fact that there has to be a constant line of sight between the receiver and the transmitter or else that little invisible line where the audio is going through 
gets completely cut off and your video just immediately goes silent, which really sucks, but it works for me because the receiver is right here on the tripod and I literally stand five feet away in front of the door and there's no invisible walls or anything in between keeping my audio from going through. Also, this corner over here is still kind of a mess because I'm not sure what I want to do with it. This is like a shoe storage thing that's flipped on its side. I have a box full of Hot Wheels cards over there and the judge sits on top of them. And there's this like little shoe desk thing that is actually broken that I have my target sitting on right now, which was really weird. If we come over here, we've got the needler up there and then inside of this cabinet, we've got darts. Let's in lots of darts. We've got standard full lengths here, mega darts and missiles and stuff in here, rival rounds in here, and ultra darts in here. If we go down a level, here's my rig. It's not quite finished yet, but I'm almost done with it. And then down here, we've got extra stuff. This is a box full of random parts, and this is a box full of random darts. I have those two boxes on the bottom because I access them the least. If we move up to the darts though, I kind of already have the situation handled when it comes to full lengths and mega darts because with the megas, I got these darts, which are really, really good. And with full lengths, yeah, it's, it's literally all dart zone waffle heads and AccuStrike darts. So that situation's covered. But when it comes to rival rounds and ultra darts, that's kind of all over the place. The rival rounds, I've got some that are nerf. I've got some that are adventure force. I got some that are headshot ammo. I don't really know what to do with these. I'm probably not gonna touch these because there's just so many of them in here that trying to sort all these would be a nightmare. When it comes to ultra though, I really do need to get some more ultra Accu strikes. I only have the 20 that came with the select and the strike. I actually only have 19 because the strike only came with nine and the rest of them are just the regular black and orange ultra darts, which everybody knows don't shoot where you're aiming them. Either those or the screamer darts that came with the scream machine. You can see the blue tips in there. There we go. These darts are fun, but they, again, don't go where you're aiming them. I really need to get more ultra Accu strikes because I'm tired of using regular ultra darts. Also, if I were to replace the full lengths, I'd want to replace them with these. If anybody knows where you can buy these, they're basically just full length versions of the dart zone ember darts. Please tell me, please. But that's basically it for this cabinet. We also have this gaming chair that I used once for a video, just kind of as a funny gag and the corpse of the zombie target is behind it. <laughs> Get it? It's, it's, it's this corpse because it's a zombie. It's, it's, it's a walk. I need to shut up. Next to that, we just have the ultra one on the floor because I don't know where else to put it right now. I'll find somewhere to put it later, but just don't worry about that right now. And the funny thing is, a substantial amount of people have asked me, what's in there? What is in the door that sits behind me every time I film? You want to know the answer? It's gonna be a super secret lore based shenanigan that's super secret. It's literally just a storage room. I never opened it because it's really ugly in there. And if y'all were thinking that it was gonna be a closet, that's where the closet is, in the most inconvenient spot in the whole room, right behind the door to come in. So in order to get in the closet, you have to come in here, close the door, then open the closet, and then you can go in. And I feel like it would have been so much easier for them to put it on the other side of the room over there, where there's the other door that opens the other way, and it's right across from these stairs so that it would actually be even easier to access. The cabinet of unspeakable horrors over here mainly contains blasters, more blasters and drum magazines that are too big to fit in my magazine drawer, which is currently sitting on the floor over here because I am trying to sell all of these magazines and instead buy a whole bunch of Worker 22 magazines to fix my magazine collection. And if you're wondering what this thing is that hangs from the banister in all of my videos, it is a chest rig to film war footage, which is something that I have yet to get to. The biggest mystery on my channel though is where did the zombie target come from? That's my second zombie target. The first zombie target is over there. I got this one for my birthday three years ago and I got this one for my birthday this year because the last one broke. And if you guys are wondering why I keep this target, it's because we're currently working on trying to set up like a man cave room in the garage. And when we do, I wanna hang this up on the wall, even though it won't work to actually shoot into anymore, it'll still be just a big flat thing that I can shoot darts at whenever I feel like it. Also, I forgot to mention we've got weird magazines and ammo holders in here, and then we've got random attachments in this drawer down here, including the Battle Scout camera and the zoom scope. I want to do a video on the zoom scope uh, later in the future, but I don't know when I'm going to get to that. And that's literally all there is to my videos. I usually don't script my videos or anything. I come in here, grab a blaster, set my camera up, and start yelling. That's basically how I film all my videos on this channel, and I edit them later through iMovie or through CapCut if I absolutely have 
have to for some insane reason. But yeah, basically that's all there is for behind the scenes on this channel. All right, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have any questions, then feel free to ask me in the comment section below and I'll happily answer them. And if you guys are going to ask about those three targets over there, they're literally just hung up on the wall because I don't know. We found two of them at the thrift store and I got one of them several years ago. With that said, thanks for watching. Bye.